Hello, this question states that um, to verify by substitution that the equations are solutions to, and then I put A and B um, right here, which are the things I'm attempting to solve, and that's uh, the partial derivative squared E divided by dx squared is equal to um, mu naught, uh, epsilon naught, uh, d squared E divided by dt squared, and similar um, for B, except for replace the E with the B, and the B is the magnetic field, and uh, respectively to E is equal to E max cosine KX minus WT, and V is equal to B max cosine KT minus WT. Basically what it's saying is to solve um, by substitution, prove that uh, these equations up here are correct. So what I did is I used these two equations right here, and um, I did E, sorry, uh, actually, I did, um, I took the, par I used the E equation, the first one, and I took the partial derivative of the electric field in terms of X, and uh, that's equal to negative K, uh, E max sine, This uh, angular velocity times t, and then I took the second derivative of that. So that's right here, which, if you can tell, which I'm sure you can tell, is uh, right up there, and it's equal to that. And that is negative k squared e max. Um, sine kx minus wt and actually this should be right here this should be cosine alright then I did the same thing for the partial derivative in terms of time which again is equal to this time just the angular velocity because we have this negative here and we would have a negative out front because there's a sign but taking the derivative of sign but you don't need to do that have the negative out front because we have the negative right there I do it again same as above This time it becomes negative because the partial derivative um, so that negative is right there. And after all that writing out and a lot of fun, we now can plug this and this into the equation that we have. So instead of you know the d um, d squared e divided by dx squared, we're going to have negative k squared e max um, cosine k x minus angular velocity times time and set that equal to now we have the mu naught and the epsilon naught and then we have uh, d squared dt squared which is the same as down here and right there so what I now do is plug that in so I have negative um, angular velocity squared times the maximum electric field times the cosine of an angular wave number x minus the angular speed times time. 
which if you can just look at the equation you can see that this this cancel oh sorry the w squared should be right here but you'll see that the cosine cancels and the e cancels so what we have left and the negative cancels then I'll move the whole thing divide by w squared so what I'll have is w or sorry um, the angular wave number squared divided by the angular uh, frequency squared which is equal to mu naught times epsilon naught and I will then k it, uh, it's poorly written. K is equal to um, 2 pi over lambda and W is or angular uh, frequency is equal to 2 pi frequency. So um, Basically what I do is these two pi's cancel out. So I have lambda times frequency squared over one. Um, if I divide these two and square them both, which is what I have right there. So what I end up with is one over lambda frequency squared, I think squared, is equal to, I'm um, sorry, uh, mu naught. Uh, it's bad. Um, times epsilon not, and I take the square root, both sides, and I'll also um, inverse them in a second. So I have one over lambda times frequency, which is equal to square root mu naught epsilon naught, and then I inverse them. So I get lambda times frequency, which is equal to c, um, the speed of light, which is also equal to this. And these are all equal to each other. So I proved by substitution that those equations are solutions. Um, for b, it's the exact same way, because when you take the second derivative, um, it ends up being the exact same thing. So I see no point in doing that. Um, and that's my solution to this problem. Thank you.